readers of reddit r slash ask reddit former undercover cops of reddit what is the craziest thing you had to do to not blow your cover my dad did undercover for several years and talked about a meth head that he hung out with all the time and even babysat her kids when she went out to get high this went on for several months while they were figuring out who the big dealer was and acquiring warrants. He grew a beard, had a fake head, drove an old shitty car. Eventually they got warrants to bust a bunch of people in the drug ring and he actually was part of the SWAT team at the time and was part of the group that smashed indoors and arrested her and a bunch of others in the area. He had to wear a balaclava to protect his identity when with the SWAT team. He said it was actually really difficult because he had become an important part of those kids lives and was kind of attached to them and now they had no mother and had to be taken to child protective services. I never got to ask him more questions about this before he passed but I have no idea how he balanced this crazy second life and then came home and acted like a normal husband and father in our family. I worked as a transcriptionist for a while, and I transcribed some tape taken off of body mix of undercover officers working a very notorious domestic terrorism case. It was crazy. They would sound like an absolute backwards hill people lunatic while talking to their marks, then later when talking to the other police officers, would sound all business and like a very professional person. My cousin was an undercover ATF agent. Anyway, they were trying to bust some guys for illegal alcohol distribution and were building a rapport by going undercover. My cousin doesn't take his ATF badge with him when he's undercover because if anyone ever saw it, he could get shot. Anyway, some hot-headed black and white cops came over and started harassing them. My cousin couldn't blow his cover, but pretty soon the police started getting physical and they beat crap out of my cousin and the guys he is trying to get evidence from. They take them all into the police station only to find out that my cousin is ATF. My cousin was pissed because cops aren't supposed to beat people up. He is currently filing a lawsuit against that police department. My friend who was an undercover cop said that multiple times he had to let himself be arrested to not blow his cover. Like when a sting was going down or whatever instead of being like hey I'm a cop, he would get arrested along with everyone else. My friend used to be a state trooper. She told me about how she used to have to go undercover as a hooker to try to catch Johns. She didn't do so well, though. She was far too polite so they all knew something was up. When I first got started in forensics it was when chat rooms and webcams were taking off, so pedophiles thought they'd be able to figure out who was who on the internet since clearly you'll know your webcamming with a 40 year old dude munching on donuts instead of a 14 year old girl. I was a naive 18 year old woman who was just getting started in policing, doing some clerical work for my hometown police department when I heard a couple people talking about how they were having a hard time chatting up creeps now that webcams were a thing. I told them why not just hire someone to act like an underage girl or boy and coach them on what to say and how to set up meetings to catch these assholes. Lo and behold I volunteered myself for the job. We set up a bedroom in one of the upstairs offices complete with a bed, a desk, and some posters from one of the officer's teenage daughters. I had to wear some of my high school sports clothes or pajamas while talking to predators via webcam, I passed notes back and forth with the team of officers and passed it off as trying to do homework while chatting. The hardest part was to still seem interested and innocent while this dude on the screen is telling me what type of horrible things he wants to do to my body thinking I'm still a child. As a former correctional officer, we had a situation where a major police department planted a cop in the prison to get information on a guy they believed was orchestrating hits from inside the prison. The warden knew and I knew, by accident, but not a single other CO knew, nor did any of the staff, including medical, and that's the way they wanted it. He went through receiving. He was categorized and placed. It was wild. 
He was there for a week, got the info they needed and got him out. It didn't become public knowledge that he was undercover until after I had left and it was a long while after as they were making a case. That was a surreal moment. My father worked for Nsice. He told me about an incident where his guys set up a sting to bust some drug suppliers who turned out to be local police setting up their own sting. They figured it out when they tried to bust each other. I know a guy who often went undercover as a junkie. He was committed. He'd stop showering for a while before a gig and piss on his tracksuit before going into work. He was so good that he managed to get the same dealer convicted twice in the space of a year and they never suspected he was the rat. He had multiple police records under different names too. Not a former undercover cop, but I have a second hand story about an undercover cop. So, this guy appears out of nowhere and befriends a relative of mine who was involved in illegal stuff. Dude was very friendly and just down to party. Had money. Paid for dot 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 product. Everything. Would drop in on parties and even allegedly hooked up with hoes. Then he placed an order much larger than before. Few weeks later, relative of mine is arrested and is currently in prison. Craziest thing an undercover cop had to do to keep their cover? Buy drugs and duck bitches. Well since no one is saying anything, I'll just throw out a slightly on topic conversation change. There's a show on Netflix called Deep Undercover. They are all 25-30 minute episodes about a real life undercover operation. There's like 50 episodes and some of them are completely insane. I think the craziest one was about the New Orleans Police Department. I highly recommend it. Edit, since so many people are wanting to watch this show, don't get your hopes up for binge watching purposes. They all have the same format so after 7-8 episodes it starts to get really repetitive. I usually watch a couple before I get bored, but the first night I watched a shit ton. So I don't want you all going in with really high expectations and being disappointed lol. Not a cop but a guy my mom dated for a long time was. Older guy, in his 70s now. He was fresh out of the academy and at the Asbury Park riots. Sad scary shit. And then was an undercover narcotics cop for 14 years during the 70s and 80s with the NJSP. He was Puerto Rican, and spoke Spanish, was an ex-marine, and became a state trooper. They utilized his ability to blend in with organized crime in the Latin community. He had to do coke in front of a bunch of dudes during a buy one night, and basically stuck his knife in and blew a mound up his nose. Then he started having a minor paranoia, panic attack that they were going to find out he was a cop. Thanks to the gram of blow he just took to the dome. He was breathing heavy and went out for air, his heart was pounding out of his chest, panicking over how to get out of it, one of the gangsters came outside to talk to him. He's ready to run or fight, guy goes man I've never seen someone snort that much at once man. You okay? He sighs a huge sigh of relief, and was like yeah I never did that much. I'm having trouble breathing hey hey. The guy was really nice brings him a drink and they smoked a sick. Everyone is joking that he has the heart of a lion to take that much. He actually felt bad about locking that one guy up when it all went down. Think he said he tried to help him or get a reduced sentence or something. There are other stories. I am former law enforcement. I did a few deployments in a surveillance capacity to sit near targets in restaurants and bars to overhear conversations. Sorry to disappoint but I didn't do anything particularly crazy. Criminals just tend to talk about the same shit that everyone else talks about, women and sports. Publicly they tend not to talk too much about their criminal activities but you can still glean information from places they say they went to and people they say they know. My cousin worked undercover in the biker community. He was really into working out and bodybuilding so he managed to convince everybody that he treated his body like a temple and didn't drink, do drugs, or eat like shit. 
that wasn't very far from the truth so it wasn't hard for him to play that part. He is also a former marine sharpshooter so he is tough as nails and pretty heavily tattooed so he definitely gave off a doomed F with me vibe. Not a cop but I did work for the liquor board in the city next to my town busting bars for underage drinking. When I would get served I would have to text the officer in charge and he would come in and take my picture with the drink then fine the bar, typically a few hundred dollars, and the bar would get a strike, three strikes and they lose their liquor license. When I would get served I'm not allowed to drink any alcoholic beverages. Only once did I actually have to drink the drink served to me. I was at a sketchy biker bar and they're known for underage drinking and already have two strikes. They're also no for getting rough with the informants like some employees and patrons assaulting the kids. 1820 So I walk in and ask for a Budweiser, I show him my real ID and he serves me my beer. Before I can even pull out my phone the bartender grabs my wrist and asks me if I work for the liquor board. I tell him no and he says ok then chug your beer. So I slam the bottle of bud and he lets me go and then tells me I have my eye on you boy and gets me another bud. I then take a snapchat of me at the bar with my drink and hightail it out of the bar. I then show the picture to the officer and tell him everything that happened and he heads into the bar and ends up fining the bar and the bartender and giving them their last strike. They end up taking everything to court and I get called in as a witness and have to testify in court everything that happened. The bar loses the case and when I'm walking out to my car the owner yells to me hey kid watch your shit, you'll get what's coming to you. So far nothing has happened to me. This happened about 3 years ago so I don't think anything will happen to me.